Hi, it is January 24th, 2022. So, looks like we have some tensions brewing between the government, the federal government of the United States and the government of Russia. Um, now, of course, these parties, unfortunately, um, own a lot of weapons, and um, unfortunately, they're probably um, so stuck in their own egos and unwilling to acknowledge defeat um, that they'll just use them to say, fuck it, fuck this world. I don't care that um, I'm acting out of evil anymore because I just want to see people suffer because I want to show them how much power I have. You know, these are power-hungry people, and they want to show us a demonstration of that power. And I say unfortunately, you know, that's a little tongue-in-cheek. You know, there is a divine plan. And I don't know what that fucking plan looks like, but it very well might look like the human race gets fucking obliterated by a fucking nuclear war. <laughs> and that's just me being real with you. Um, now, if that happens, I will embrace it. I will say that's great. I am happy that we got an ending, because we needed an ending. Um, something needed to happen to change things around this planet. And as someone who believes that there is a divine plan, I also believe that there is a better place that exists, a better reality that exists than this reality, this world. Um, I believe that when I die, I will go to that place, assuming that I die which I'm not entirely convinced will happen. <laughs> but if it happens, I'm confident that's where I'm going. And I'm confident that's where I'm going because I understand what it would take to build and maintain that kind of a world. I understand the ways people would need to act in order to um, maintain that kind of a world in a steady state. So, I'm good, dude. And if you got my book, and you've read it, and you understand what I'm saying in that book, you're probably alright too, man. Because you probably understand the same things that I understand. And if that's the case, you don't really have to worry about this bullshit. Because this is just God teaching some people some lessons. And sometimes lessons are tough, man. And uh, you got to take a big picture view here, dude. We're one planet in a universe. You know, our galaxy has billions of stars. There are billions of galaxies. Are we really enough for God to want to deal with and, like, get this fucking planet in shape? You know... Look at people, man. Look at how people are acting, man. Everywhere you go, you can see it. You can see cruelty. You can see people just acting horrible towards each other. And I've experienced a lot of that in my life. I've experienced some very, very horrible people who have come into my life to hurt me. And, um... I'm not the only one. We live in a world full of fucking suffering, man. You know, I got a lot of blessings a lot of people don't have. I got a roof over my head. I got food to eat. I got my health. I got all kinds of stuff. I got a career. I got a car. I got some savings, you know. 
I got a lot going for me that a lot of people don't have. Despite that, I'm still suffering the emotional wounds that everyone exists here, that experiences here, from living in a completely emotionally detached society, um, where people just fear telling any kind of real honesty about what they're feeling, about their suffering, because as soon as you do that, all you get is people telling you why it's your own fault. <laughs> and um, there's just no compassion there. There's just... There's a dearth of compassion. There's a dearth of empathy. A dearth of kindness. A dearth of people willing to listen, you know? And that's a shame, man. Because if people were willing to listen, they could learn. They could learn how we could create that kind of world. And they could even learn how to end the fucking threat of nuclear war. <laughs> they read my fucking book. But, you know, I guess people just want to hang out and just wait and just see what happens and that would be exciting man i it would really it would really change this world i think it would really um i think it'd really rip the hearts out of people you know i think i think those who survived if anyone survived I mean, they'd really be building from... I mean, it would just be a struggle for survival. I mean, I think it would take a real long time for any kind of real civilization to develop again because so much would be destroyed. So much of the global supply chain is... It's all interdependent, you know? People don't understand, like, how tough... How much is, how intricate it is, how, how, I say tough and it's, it, that's not the right word because if we're talking about a world where governments exist, rebuilding an economy is impossible. There is no tough. It's impossible. There will be no survival. But like, if we have freedom, it actually might not be that tough. I mean, it's going to be work, but I don't know how much work. Because if we had freedom, the work would be so much more efficient than what we've ever seen. I mean, with the technology we have, I mean, but no one wants to hear about that, you know. People just want to, you know, show how big their dicks are, you know. It's like... I really hope, I mean, I'm excited. I am excited, I guess. Some stuff excites me. Like, when I look at Australia and I look at these foreign minister, like, or, blah, blah, the Australian government and, like, some of these people and the way they talk and just how pompous and just cruel um, and horrible these people are. I guess when I think about the fact that they're relying on a currency that's going to collapse and a government that is funded <laughs> and that their cops are going to be basically for hire to the highest bidder. When I think about all those things and then I think about how the power is going to shift and how the people are going to take the power and how those foreign ministers aren't going to be able to afford protection from the people. And I think about how much rage there is. And I think about the things that humans have done in the past with tyrants, such as in 1917 or in, uh, what was it, uh, 1780, whenever the hell the French Revolution was. Um, when I think about the anger that existed back then, but then I think about how much more anger there is now um, 
I think about how much more hatred there must be now and how much more the people will have been fucked over when this whole thing collapses. You know, there's anger now between the people who understand it, but when this collapse happens, all of a sudden everyone's going to understand. And I just think about what they're going to do to those Australian government officials when they get their fucking hands on them. And that actually excites me. That actually gives me a thrill. Um, that makes me happy. I guess I found my joy, man. I guess I finally found my joy in this world. And it's the idea of what's going to happen to those fucking people when their population gets their fucking hands on them. And it isn't just them. You know, a lot of currencies are going to lose their value. In fact, they might all lose their fucking value. So, there's a lot of real bad governments in this fucking world, man. And um, there's a lot of grievances. And it just, it excites me, man. So... Now, if they start dropping nukes, well, you got to understand something about that. You got to understand the U.S. has enough nuclear weapons to destroy this entire world many times over, and these nuclear weapons are located on ballistic missile submarines that exist below beneath the ocean surface, and cruise around in undisclosed locations around the world's oceans. So even if Russia decided we're going to just destroy the United States, which they could do. They have the weaponry and they have the technology. We don't have the missile defense systems to protect us from that. And they know that and we know that. And what we call it is mutually assured destruction, is that if a war happened, we have what we call second strike capability, right? So even if the whole landmass of the U.S. and all the military bases around the world got destroyed with nukes, we would still have those submarines and those warheads and we could retaliate. And um, of course we would. So <laughs> now it'd be nice if the Russians just said, you know what? Is it really America that's the problem? Or is it just Washington DC that's the fucking problem? And I wonder if they've ever asked themselves that fucking question. Because i got to say, on the streets of America, there's people like me, man. There's people who support freedom and fucking kindness and empathy and compassion and service. You know, I went to a Russian barber shop yesterday. I got my hair cut. I got a straight razor shave and a facial. And... These were good guys, man. You know, my son got his hair cut there too. And, you know, we had some conversation. It was nice, man. And um, as far as I'm concerned, these are human beings just like me, man. I don't have any problems whatsoever with the Russian population. I'll, I don't even have any problems with the Russian government, dude. Because... <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, at least they're not doing shit to me. <laughs> they're just... I don't give a shit what happens in the fucking Ukraine. I don't give a shit what happens in the fucking that part of... What does that fucking difference make to me, personally? You know, it ain't like Russia's over here fucking with me. What? But So, I don't really care. Now, do the Russian people in the government get along? I don't fucking know. I don't, I'm not an expert in that. My guess is most governments do have a group of dissenters, but um, wouldn't that be something if they're just like, well, all the bad people are in one place. <laughs> we could just hit that place. And uh, if you really think about it, I mean, they got a big arsenal, dude. I mean, may now, of course, the po <laughs> See, that would get weird, right? Like, what would the admirals do? What would the generals or the admirals, whoever is in charge of these 
nuclear warheads, whoever makes that decision, given that the entirety of <laughs> Washington, D.C. got wiped out, like, who even makes that call, like, are we going to retaliate? Because they might just say, <laughs> okay, let's have a little conversation. Now that you got rid of the people you really hate the most, <laughs> let's just have a little conversation and see if we can figure something out. And that would be really cool if they did that. And then, like, the whole world could just, like... <laughs> Be cool, man. So, it's just an option. I wanted to throw it out there because I don't know if people are thinking about it. And, uh, <laughs> like, holy fuck, kid. That'd be something, man. Now, look, there's innocent people in Washington, D.C. I'm sure there's a few good people here and there. But, uh, You know, people talk about the greater good and sacrifices, things of that nature. Now, I know a lot of so-called ANCAPs and libertarians are like, oh, no, 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 we can't ever, can't ever talk about the greater good. We can't ever make a sacrifice for a greater good. But it's like, that's actually fucking bullshit. And, uh, like, sometimes you have tough choices, man. And everything, in every choice you ever make involves sacrifice. You're going to sacrifice that opportunity cause that's a fucking sacrifice. You know... A lot of libertarians really fucking are really fucking close-minded pieces of shit, too. And I, I really need to actually just put that out there because, like, they still believe all this. Like, I, I literally just see these fucking guys, like, arguing all day about the same bullshit because they just, they don't get certain topics, dude. Like, there's certain stuff the Marxists and all these people actually do understand, like, and it's like they just assume everything they believe is wrong and, and has no basis in reason. And it's like, no, actually, some of the points they make are correct. And you need to understand how to address those points. And if you want to understand those fucking points, you can read my fucking book. Um, so. It's tough, man. It's tough living in this world where literally it just seems like everyone is fucking unwilling to learn or listen. You know what? I can't say everyone. I do have a handful of people who have bought my book and read it. and Or maybe they haven't read it, but they bought it. Um, I've got... <laughs> we'll see. Give me a fucking review, man, if you read it. And it can be a bad review. I don't care. Like, I think I get a chance to res rebut or respond. But I don't care if you give me a bad review. Like, I want you to be honest. And tell me what you think, dude. <laughs> like, your judgments are fine, dude. Like... It doesn't mean nothing to me. Like, it's fine. Like, even if you point something out, and I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, like, I probably shouldn't have been like that or done that or said that or whatever. Like, I can handle making a mistake because I'm fucking human. And because my sense of self-worth isn't about whether I'm right or not. My sense of self-worth is based on my intentions. And I know my fucking intentions have been good. Sorry, I went dark for a minute there. But, um, you know, I think, like, that's, like, so many, it's crazy, right? See, like, that's the thing. Different individuals are different. Like, I think some libertarians have good intentions. I think some libertarians are bitches. And the same goes for even, like, People who, I'm sure there's people who support the vaccine with good intentions, but they might even have, I mean, I think in their own mind, I think most people do have good intentions because it's hard to live with yourself for long if you know that you're being a piece of shit. Like, but people rationalize and they don't listen and they do a lot to like, prevent themselves from having to hear the information that would show to them that they've been assholes. But ultimately, it's an individual thing, and everyone needs to be accountable for their own actions, um, what they've personally done, who they've personally hurt. And um, I just thought I'd stop in and say hello. So... You guys have a good one.